Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, August the 1st, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, the Pentagon is giving Al-Qaeda contracts in Afghanistan. Putin refuses Eric Holder's extradition request for Snowden. And InfoWars Nightly News has a chance to talk to the winner of the Operation Paul Revere contest. All this and more tonight on InfoWars Nightly News. Well, do you remember when Rachel Maddow ridiculed Alex Jones for pointing out the connections between the U.S. government and Al-Qaeda? You saw them stage Fast and Furious. Folks, they staged Aurora. They staged Sandy Hook. The evidence is just overwhelming. He also says the evidence is overwhelming that President Obama is now personally the global head of Al-Qaeda. See, folks, the evidence is just overwhelming. Do I have to spell it out for you? Are you blind? Well, no one is more blind than those who refuse to see. Now, this is a story from Prison Planet, but this is also a story from Bloomberg. And this is, Bloomberg is not known to be a... Uh, small government advocacy outlet. So this is what Bloomberg reported. I am deeply troubled that the U.S. military can pursue, attack, and even kill terrorists and their supporters, but that some of the U.S. government believe we cannot prevent these same people from receiving a government contract. Now that is a quote from Joe Sopko, Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction. So we have Bloomberg quoting an inspector general of the U.S. government saying, even though these people are terrorists, we can't stop them from getting a government contract. And he goes on to say, they may be enemies of the U United States, but that's not enough to keep them from getting government contracts. He said, while the Obama administration is funding, equipping, and training al-Qaeda extremists in Syria to overthrow the Assad government, it is also awarding contracts to al-Qaeda after a decade-plus long war against the quote-unquote terrorists in Afghanistan. Well, this is nothing new. Rachel Maddow can read this in the headlines today. She could have read it in the headlines a long time ago. The government created al-Qaeda to fight the Russians in Afghanistan. Bin Laden and Anwar al-Awlaki were CIA assets, and they continue to fund them, as well as run a massive drug war operation out of Afghanistan. It has been pointed out in the past by other news outlets, although we re reported it here as well, that uh, worldwide poppy production out of Afghanistan was only 10% of the worldwide poppy production, and now it has risen to over 90% after the U.S. military went there to assist them in doing that function. So it's a part of the drug war story as well. But now the real aid to al-Qaeda is going to happen after we leave, perhaps big aid to them. Also reported from InfoWars, NATO leaves live munitions behind at abandoned Afghan Air Force bases. The U.S.-led military coalition in Afghanistan has agreed to do a better job of cleaning up deadly unexploded munitions from its bases and firing ranges as it closes them down after the U.N. accused the coalition of leaving dangerous explosives behind. So-called explosive remnants of war have emerged in the past few months as an increasing danger to civilians, in particular children. In the first half of the year, nearly 150 people were killed or injured when such munitions detonated. Well, right now, they're just talking about carelessly left behind unexploded ammunition. But we have seen, as the government has pulled out of one country after the other after their war, that they leave behind massive military bases filled with all kinds of equipment. And usually, after we leave a country, the people that we were there to fight usually take over. So, of course, that's going to be al-Qaeda, but then we <laughs> kind of put them in power to start with. But it's not just the wars that we know about. The Pentagon has secret wars. This is a story that was broken by the New American. It's Pentagon's secret wars, you don't even have a right to know. When asked by senators to identify the groups being fought, the Pentagon said it's a secret. If the organizations are infiltrated enough to be targeted with military force, why can't they be mentioned publicly? There is a countervailing, very important interest in the public knowing who the government is fighting against in its name. And that's a quote from Jack Goldsmith of Harvard University Law School. Now, another study done by another Harvard professor and by a professor from UCLA is titled, How Many Wars is the U.S. Fighting Today? And they estimate in their study that the U.S government is fighting at least five, quote, unannounced and undeclared wars around the world. Well, we know that the U.S. government helped to fund and create al-Qaeda, but who is really controlling the U.S. government? 
We've all heard of the free Obama phone. Yes, everybody in Cleveland, low minority, got Obama phone. Keep Obama in president, you know? He gave us a phone. He gave you a phone. Do more. We know that Obama used the free Obama phone to reach more people during the campaign. Did you know to get a free Obama phone, all you have to do is income qualify? And you don't really have to necessarily show proof. They say you're supposed to get food stamps, some kind of government assistance, or be on welfare. But a lot of times, people can get a phone without any proof at all. Like all good ideas, they start off great. Then the government gets a hold of it, bloats it up, and then it gets out of control. The Obama phone program is called Lifeline. It's provided by SafeLink Wireless, which is a program for income-eligible households provided by TrackPhone Wireless, owned by America Mobile, which belongs to Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim. So Mexico is funding Obama's campaign through the Obama phone, and the tax you pay on your cell phone goes back to Mexico so that they can provide phones and service to the enslaved welfare recipients so that they can continue to vote to keep their free phones. I am Gigi Arnetta with an InfoWars nightly news alert. Well, there's been new developments in the crimes committed by the NSA. That's right. This is not a story about Edward Snowden or where he's going or who's going to, where he's going to stay. This is about the crimes committed by the NSA. And some people at the Black Hat Conference understand that. Our nation takes stopping terrorism as one of the most important things. Freedom. Exactly. No, I'm saying I don't trust you. <laughs> you lied to Congress. Why, why would we believe you're not lying to us right now? Read the Constitution. I have. Well, General Alexander has read the Constitution. He just doesn't care what it says. And when he says this is about freedom, he's lying about that as well, just as he lied to Congress. Now, the Black Hat Conference is a place where both hackers and the government go and show each other how to exploit systems because, of course, the government wants to know how to do that themselves. And, of course, there's a legitimate reason for looking at how people break in so you can protect against it. But as Aaron Schwartz has pointed out, the feds fund most of the exploits. The federal government is the biggest creator of malware. And then they use that to scare us into strangling the Internet and taking away our Internet freedoms. Now, there was another hacker that everybody expected to be presenting there, uh, Barnaby Jack, and he has in past years shown some remarkable things at Black Hat. He was going to talk about how easy it is to hack into medical devices and to even kill people. But of course, that's a multi-billion dollar industry, medical devices, and it would not serve a lot of people's interest to have that information get out. He died just before the conference under mysterious circumstances. Now, the mainstream media will cover the story, story of Edward Snowden, and they'll kind of turn it into a Where's Waldo type of story, but it's about a lot more than that. Snowden's father calls out Obama on Nuremberg crimes. This is written by Bruce Fine and Snowden's father, and it says, These I protest are not mere second-class rights, but belong in the category of indispensable freedoms. Among deprivations of rights, none is so effective in cowing a population crushing the spirit of the individual, and putting terror in every heart. Uncontrolled search and seizure is one of the first and most effective weapons in the arsenal of every arbitrary government. That's what's going on, folks. This is how tyrants work, and this is why it is expressly forbidden in the Constitution, in the Fourth Amendment, and others. The types of things that we're seeing on a daily basis in many, many areas, but especially with this NSA story, with the dragnet that they're doing. They have to go before a judge and explain the reason why they are going to search someone or search someone's things or their papers or their personal property or their writings. That has to be put before a judge and a judge has to agree. But instead they have done that to every American citizen. And it doesn't matter what degree they have done it to. They've done it. It breaks the law. Now, the same people that broke the law are now asking that Edward Snowden be extradited out of Russia. And Russia says that they're, they've rejected out of hand Holder's extradition request for Snowden. And this is not just a partisan thing. This is something that former leaders of both parties have come out in opposition to this. Former President Jimmy Carter says, America now has no functioning democracy. And on the GOP side, former Senator Gordon Humphrey from New Hampshire wrote a very eloquent piece to 
uh, to Snowden himself and to the uh, Guardian, which reported it, he said, I object to the monumentally disproportionate campaign being waged by the U.S. government against Edward Snowden while no effort is being made to identify, remove from office, and bring to justice those officials who have abused power seriously and repeatedly violating the Constitution of the U.S. and the rights of millions of unsuspecting citizens. Well, the officials who are abusing power and ignoring the Constitution includes Eric Holder and Obama, because if they do not bring to justice those who commit crimes at the NSA and the CIA, they are then complicit in those crimes. They are then accessories to those crimes. So this is these are the leaders of the previous generation of politicians talking about how America is turning into a banana boat republic. This is, uh, it, it's incredible what, what we're seeing here in terms of, the, of ignoring the Constitution and breaking the law and allowing that to happen. That's not, they're not even concerned with that. They just want to make this about shutting down whistleblowers who are going to explode, expose further criminal activity from them. Now we have a quote here from Henry David Thoreau. He says, disobedience is the true foundation of liberty. The obedient must be slaves. Well, Thoreau was heavily quoted in that letter written by Bruce Fine to Obama and to Eric Holder. Now, coming up after the break, we have an interview with the grand prize winner from Operation Paul Revere, the $100,000 prize winner. So stay tuned. We want to hear all about his film and how he made it and why. Well, although three months is a very short time to do a film, it seems like it's been a long time reviewing these. I tell you, we've had We've really been overwhelmed with both the quantity and the quality of the entries that came in, but there's one that stands out, and that's The Purge, the $100,000 grand prize winner. And I've got the filmmaker on the line with us right now. It's Michael Dorman. Michael, congratulations. Thank you so much. This has been so much fun from the very beginning all the way here to the announcement yesterday. It has been fabulous. That's great. Yeah, tell us how you found out about the Operation Paul Revere contest. Well, I'm a I'm a daily listener of Alex Jones, so obviously he announced it. Uh, probably what was it back in January? Yeah, yeah, Where, yeah. So we started great. to get ideas about it then, and and uh, started planning there there on out. Super, super. So you decide you're going to get in it. What's the first thing you do when you're going to make a film? You got to get the ideas together. And so my brother has like a stack of different articles that he likes to collect, and I do too. And so we started looking through those, and you know, at that time frame in January, February, you had a lot of articles. You guys had a lot of articles about the DHS, and so you had the paper targets coming out. Then sometime right. around there, mm -hmm. you had the um, the uh, the tanks being uh, announced, the uh, twenty seven hundred uh, tanks for domestic use. You had the seven thousand um, assault rifles that they were using, but you know, they were going to make ours illegal, but they could, they could have them. That's right. <laughs> so, so you had all these articles and it's like DHS, 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 DHS. I think we need to make a movie about DHS. Yeah. And, and that's the key. I got to tell you, there were so many fine entries, production values, very good. And they were also on target and they covered a variety of, of topics. And that was a really important thing too, about Operation Paul Revere. But you know, it's, it's just like, when, when Alex saw that, it just hit home because he's been talking for so long about how they're holding these meetings. I mean, this goes way back. They've been doing this type of thing for a very long time. We've been talking about it for a very long time. And when you acted it out, when he saw you know, your, your film production, your dramatization of what's actually going on in these meetings that we've been talking about, we've been showing the notes from the meetings, we've been showing even some clips from the meetings when you actually acted this out, Mm -hmm. That really hit home with him. That that's what pushed it over the top, I believe. Yeah, you even showed the video of you know the DHS guy. What it, what was it in the meeting? And this guy's like, yeah, George Washington is that's the right. terrorist. And and so right. you see that. Oh, we got to do a movie about this. That's great. Well, tell us what you're going to do with the money now. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I'm getting a little low on the uh, Tangy Tangerine, so I think I'm going <laughs> to hit the Infowars website store and get a little bit of uh, the Tangy Tangerine Two. That's great. <laughs> Get a copy of uh, um, um, what's your new video? The uh, State of Mind. State of Mind. Yeah. I haven't seen that yet. I got to get that. Yeah. Probably get a uh, infidel body armor. Look good. <laughs> I don't have a pro one 
Pro Pair yet, so I'll probably get one of those. I tell you what, that Infidel body armor, I, I keep seeing these unannounced no-knock SWAT raids, and it's like, man, they could break in on any, you don't, they don't have to have a reason, they just break in and start shooting if they think you're suspicious. I mean, it's almost yeah. like everybody should have that. It's about the only way, you know, you can't get them to get the fluoride out of the water, you can't get them to get the c cops under control, but at least you can get a filter and you get, get body armor. It's about, uh, about you all never you know. Do. That's right. You never know. Well, what are you going to do with the film projects now? Uh, what's, what's next up on your slate for films? You got, well, have you got something under production now? No, I don't have anything under production now. I do want to talk to you guys because I would love to investigate this more as far as, you know, let's look at other corruption that we could really get into their offices. We can really get into their mindset and see the discussions between the White House and the Illuminati, mm -hmm. the uh, DHS, the NSA. What are they really talking about? So I'd, I'd love to do a full drama uh, narrative film where we interweave a, di uh, a bunch of different characters and then see the cause and see the effect. We see them talking about it, and then we see it played out. Or even some... as Gigi or Netta, special report earlier, she's got a, a breaking report about Obama and the connection with the Obama phone and the telecom billionaire out of Mexico, the world's uh, richest man. So, you know, we talk about the presidents being just puppets of international globalist corporations. I mean, so <laughs> you, so example. exactly. So we see yeah. that conversation. That's mm -hmm. the kind of narrative I'd like to get into. And that's what we did with Purge. And that's people right. seem to like it. So let's go further. That's right. You know, we, we tell people about what's happening in the news. We can put together documentaries that, that spread it out, give them a broader context. Mm -hmm. But those are all didactic. And it seems like when you act out something and people can see that interaction, then it really clicks in a different way. It wakes them up in a different way. And then they're ready to go back and explore farther with the documentaries, with the news articles. But it, it's really got to click with them on a visceral level. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what your film and other films that people have acted this stuff out, I think that's what's really important about that. Yeah, and, and look at what the enemy is doing. Now mm -hmm. we got a TV series on Hillary Clinton come, is coming out. Why, well, why are they doing that? Well, it's for the reasons you just stated. Well, you mentioned that, and there's a breaking news story that was on the Hollywood Reporter about the chilling history of how Hollywood helped Hitler. And Alex talked mm -hmm. about this a right. little bit yesterday. It's mm -hmm. really amazing. It says, drawing on archival documents in the U.S. and Germany, he reveals a shocking extent in this book to which Hollywood cooperated and collaborated with the Nazis during the decade leading up to World War II to protect yep. its business. And they point out they didn't do any critical uh, portrayals of Hitler until well after the war began out of Hollywood. Yes. It just talks about this cozy relationship. We see that mm -hmm. same kind of cozy relationship now between Hollywood and uh, the federal government in Washington. I mean, there really are tools of the federal government. Absolutely. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna be in the info war, then mm -hmm. we got to be offensive with film. That's and you right. guys, have, you guys have done a great job. You're encouraging the rest of us info warriors to get involved. And I believe there's a lot of things we could do. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background in filmmaking, your your uh, movie company. I know you've got a film I saw on Amazon, uh, Renegade. It's a PG Western, and I liked the film reviews there. There's a couple of Amazon reviews. This one said it's True Grit meets Lonesome Dove, fun for the whole family, a great message. Superb score, quality acting. Another one said great faith-based film for families. Tell us a little bit about that and some of your other work. Yeah, well, I'm originally from Tucson, Arizona. That's where I am now. That's where the film company is now. And, uh, yeah, I got going into film back in 2003. My first short film was about the devil and a, a day <laughs> that you see in the devil, kind of like the satire guy you guys have done. Yeah, so yeah. I, I really should show some clips of uh, that for you sometime. But, um uh, that was kind of my first. And then I've probably done 15 or so short movies about Pontius Pilate. I did one about um, the Hmong people of uh, the Vietnam War and how they helped um, American down fighter pilots. Hmm. I've done um, oh, all kinds you know, of ones. But this, you mentioned, oh, you mentioned uh, the film about the devil. We, we took a lot of heat from that from a lot of people. Didn't get, I, I kind of wonder if uh, C.S. Lewis got heat for doing <laughs> Screw tape letters from people. Oh, I'm sure, but it's powerful. I mean, when yeah. you start to see what 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 is the devil really talking about with his demons and, and such, mm -hmm. and then why does he do what he does? Why is he so hateful? Why where did that come from? And so I you know, I would love to do a feature film. It would take a lot of money to do, but where you actually see the devil in heaven and then you see the fall, and mm -hmm. then you see why he is why he is. <laughs> what is he really after here on earth? Right. Is, it just, is it just because he said, no, 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 there's a reason to it all. That's and right. so 
I, you know, I, I think it's a powerful piece if we could do it. But uh, Renegade, yeah, it's a family film um, about a movie about God, gold, and guns. Mm-hmm. The tagline is the the good and the bad shall be revealed. And uh, yeah, go on uh, chosenfilmworks.com. That's my website. You can buy it through that. And it's on Amazon too. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, right. yeah, I, I think uh, your audience would really enjoy it. That's great. So uh, I forget, you, did you say that you're, you're, also, you're already working on another film right now or do you have an active project that's going on? Or? No, I got, I got a lot of different um, things in development I like to get going. So no, I'm not working on anything officially right now. Mm-hmm. I have a comedy that I like to do. I like the, obviously the movie about the devil, but uh, now would be a good time. And I really feel we are at a critical, critical time in history. If we're going to do this, if we're going to really ante up and come after the globalists, and, and in the info war and, and, and get on an offensive, the best defense is going to be a good offense and That's get right. on the, yeah, get on the offensive. Mm-hmm. Now's the, now's the time. So if we're going to do it, we got to, we got to start talking and planning here, That's uh, right. you know, this fall. That's right. Yeah. And that's, and that's basically the time frame we're looking at right now. We've got a documentary that's under production, and it's after that that Alex is going to start rolling these things out. And that was one of the key things that we needed to do was to be able to turn around things that were very, on a very short time basis. Tell us about some of the other films that were in Paul Revere that maybe you like, some of your competition. What, what stood out to you? Um, a Healthy Distrust was awesome. Great interviews. Mm-hmm. They had great information that they passed along. Um, uh, Dream Revered was fantastic. Yeah, that was almost, you know, that was really kind of in our top four. You know, I mean, it was very difficult as to, you know, what to put for the third place winner. It was really, really close. That was an excellent uh, documentary. I really like that. Look at look at American Drone. That might as well be on network TV. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you have so many different people. There was um, Endgame, the production value. Look at um, yeah. um, what is it? A Political Earth, the animation yeah. one. Yeah. It was fantastic. I mean, you have yeah. a lot of it. These would co- would have competed in any film festival in the world. Absolutely. And you know, you mentioned American Drone. And he told us, we, we've got his other film up there, The Futurist, which mm-hmm. was a mm-hmm. uh, kind of a fantasy film about 9-11. And, of course, he told us that he had tried to get in many film festivals, and they all rejected it because hmm. of subject matter. They don't want to uh, talk about that, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a, there's a self-censorship that's going on, even if it isn't coming from the top. They don't want to get into certain types of controversies. They have no trouble jumping into other types of controversies. But mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, really looking at what happened on September 11th, which is fundamental uh, uh-huh. to the way it, you know, this country has been transformed on the basis of the official narrative of 9-11. Mm-hmm. And so that's something we should all look at very carefully, just as we should all look at very carefully the uh, official rationale for transforming the world based on the perception of climate change and the causes, the perceived causes of climate change or whatever. So they, they come up with these narratives and they use these narratives to completely restructure society and government and even create a world government, and yet we're not allowed to question or even look at these fundamental assumptions. Yeah, but, you know, just take it one brick at a time, build mm-hmm. it up, build it up. You know, it's, right. it's like it, uh, one of my favorite books is Og Mandino's The Greatest Salesman in the World, and it talks about if you're going to be a success at anything, you just have to, you know, you may take, if you're going to chop down a tree and you got your axe, the first blow may not cause even a tremor in the wood. But from childish swipes, if you just keep on it, keep it, keep on going, the oak will eventually tumble. It's like anything. You just got to just keep going, keep going, keep going. And then hopefully you hit those points of critical mass, Mm -hmm. especially in the info war where people where where things do begin to snap. And what was it? Uh, Summer 2012, HSBC or something admitted that they laundered the money for it or something (laughs) like that. Yeah, Yeah. So there's been big events that really makes the general public think. Obviously, there's, you know, how far is uh, the mainstream media going to take it? They're not going to take it anywhere. But, the, you know, it just seems like the truth does get leaked out. Well, you have and situations like the Snowden case, for example, right now. that There were whistleblowers right after September 11th that talked about precisely what he's talking about, the dragnet right. that went out there. These are people who were on the inside. They went through the entire internal process. Mm-hmm. Then they went open with it. The government came after them. But it took Edward Snowden leaking the same information that these insiders had been, had mm-hmm. already put out there 10, 12 years ago. It took his revelation to really get people to start thinking about it. So you never know what's going to hit traction with people. Yes. That's why we're trying to do every different kind of avenue. We try to mm-hmm. do broadcast news, print news. We try to do documentaries. We try to do now fiction films. So there's a lot of different things that we're trying to do. And 
And you did a great job. I know you're very happy winning. And we just want to tell the other people who participate in this that we're going to be looking at all of their work. And it's a talent search as part of this. And we had a lot of really fine work out there. But we're interested in, in talking to you some more. And uh, you'll be hearing back from us, I'm sure. All praise and glory to God. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Uh, all my people involved, thank you. They're so excited, so proud. And uh, right. hopefully, hopefully we can do an annual event. Yes. It'll be an annual yeah. film festival sometime. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Michael. Well, congratulations to Michael Dorman, the producer of The Purge, the $100,000 grand prize winner in Operation well, Paul Revere. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, tomorrow night. Stay tuned.